and so on to our last session. An inevitable consequence of this COVID-19 pandemic is the loss of many lives as we see reported daily. Sometimes these numbers may just be numbers, but to many around the globe, these numbers represent people dear to them. The elderly have been unfortunately easily afflicted in this pandemic, and that leaves the mass majority grieving their losses. Dr. Noelia Late has been especially sensitive to this matter and is filled with the compassion to explore the layers of death from the standpoint of the patient, the loved ones, medical doctors, and psychotherapists, and systematically discuss ways to subside grieving. Dr. Leite has worked as a licensed psychotherapist in several countries, including the US, the UK, Brazil, and Argentina. This has enabled her interactions with individuals, couples, and families from various settings at a multicultural level. She has also been a speaker in several professional conferences and has conducted numerous workshops across the world. This published professional also runs mindfulness-based therapy through yoga and so on, taking a more humanistic and integrative spin to the idea of healing. She's enthused to now give back to the community the blessings she has received from life. And with that, here's Dr. Leti with her topic, Grieving for the Elderly. Oops, 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 oops. Can you hear me? Yes, very clear. Oh, thank you, Dr. Tanusha. Good afternoon and good evening to you all. Good morning to me. I am in Miami. It's 7.20 here. So I'm very happy and pleased to be here uh, with you and connected with this part of the world. It's so nice. So, but let's share my screen with you and let's start. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Alrighty, so my topic, as you know, is grieving for the elderly. And as you may have experienced with me and all of us have may experience uh, COVID and the effects of the COVID, because COVID has been taking our loved ones, especially our elderly. And individuals have not been able to bury their loved ones, to mourn for their loved ones, to make peace with them, and mainly, mainly to finish unfinished business. And on top of that, this artificial separation has been a disservice because this is the time that we would need more closure and we are separated. And here in the US, COVID has reached now in June 600,000 deaths. And this data is from February, February this graphic. And uh, in February, it had already matched. So 500,000 deaths, more than now, more than the wars, the three big wars here in the US. COVID has killed more than that. So, and before we starting our talk with COVID, we have gravitated in these three main levels of grief, ambiguous uh, grief, anticipatory grief, and complex grief. In the beginning of COVID, all of us were gravitated in, gravitated in the ambiguous grief. But now we are gravitating between anticipatory and complex grief. And this is so dangerous. Why? Because ambiguous grief is when we are uncertain of things. So in the beginning of COVID, 
people didn't know what things would end. So, and they used to have their questions in their minds. Am I lose my job when the kids are coming back to school? And then with the onset of COVID, people started to grieve more and more and expecting, started to expect the worst. So, oh my goodness, I'm going to get the virus. Uh, I'm going to lose my parents. I'm going to lose my job. And then more and more deaths coming and happening. And the worst happened. People start to lose people. People start to lose their elderly. And of course, the inability to mourn in traditional ways or seeking support increased people's and family emotional chaos. So let's talk briefly about death from different views. From the view of the patient, the medical doctors, the caregivers, and the therapists. So patient, by the time he's closer and closer to death, he starts to feel physically frail, more frail, they lose appetite, they nap more, they sleep more, they daydream more. And emotionally, they get very confused, more and more confused. And many of our elderly, they, they get very concerned because they, they need to finish their business, but many times they don't tell to the family. They, they, they don't express this emotional uh, worries, these worries and these feelings of uh, concern. And, but it's, it's literally, they feel very reconnected with their ancestors. They have a sense of connection, love, comfort, and purpose. And they accept that. They are confused, but they, are, they don't feel fearful or lonely. And uh, so sorry. so sorry, Noelle. I have to interrupt for a second. Can you see me? Is Julian right here? Noelle, can you see me? Uh, no, I cannot see you. Tell me. Just one second. I'm hearing there is a feedback around you. Is that a fan or is that a phone nearby you that's very close? No, no, there is nothing. I think. Okay. I'm by myself. Okay. Because are you so hearing an echo? It's not an echo, it's like a frequency. We hear a very, a very light frequency. Oh, maybe somewhere. it's a light because it's yeah. very dark. It's very early here in Miami. No problem, no problem. So how about you. that now? Oh, much better, much oh, better. Oh, it's the light. Oh, thank you for telling me that. Let oh, me I'm sorry. Let me hear so, it for a while. I'm just a little bit darker now because <laughs> it's very early here in Miami. No problem, no problem really. Okay, you can continue, you can continue. I'll let you know if there's any more issue. All righty, no problem. Thank you, guys. Okay, let me continue here, guys. So I guess I need to come back a little bit. So let's continue here with the next medical doctors. They are mostly trained to treat the body and the physical health. And by the time when they cannot do anything else, what they do, they send the patient, the elderly, to the palliative care. And here are we poor caregivers. The caregivers feel so much. They, they, they are, by the time, especially when they go to the palliative care, they, they start to feel very anxious because they have to take care of the things of the elderly. And they have to dis make very important decisions regarding his or her health. So is he going to use ventilation, resuscitation, intubation? They have to take care of the household. It's a mess. And when family is not prepared, of course, emotional turmoil increases. Lack of information increases fear. Unsolved issues increases uh, guilt and self-blame avoiding or denying information because many family members, they, they avoid information. It increases anger and self and blaming others' attitude. 
and not saying goodbye, of course, it is sadness, grief, and depression. And and here we are, we therapists. Uh, I supervise many therapists in my practice, and I see them experiencing a huge level of burnout. They are very overwhelmed because they have a huge amount of work. And while they are helping others, they are also processing their own loss. So they are also suffering high levels of anxiety, depression, and grief. So, and here is a self-reflection that I want to invite you to do as therapists. Are you taking care? enough care of ourselves so it's so important for us to do a, a evaluation and evaluation and see how we are in the midst of this so self-awareness is so important pay attention to the signs of our body intuition emotion respecting our limits setting boundaries because the best way to heal others is to heal ourselves first. And when I talk about uh, self-care, uh, we need to walk the talk. Quality over quantity. Self-care is about to be good to ourselves. If we practice this to ourselves, we are going to also to help our clients to take care to do the same. So are we doing some kind of exercise? Are you eating properly? Are we doing our hygiene in sleeping properly? We, how about our connections? Are we fostering good connections, proper connections? How about our leisure time? Are we reading good books, feeding ourselves with good music, with uh, good films? Good people, relaxation is so good to help our body and our uh, spirit and our mind to be more connected. Are you keeping and fostering a regular connection with our spiritual source? It doesn't matter what, what the name of your spiritual source. If it's God, if it's Buddha, Allah, energy, nature, it's so important during this time, especially, for us to feel connected. And gratitude, keeping an attitude of a uh, state of gratitude is so important. And there are so many ways also to do that. Mindfulness helps us to do that. Uh, um, I have a journal, I have a journal, I have a jar that I put small pieces of paper once a day at least with one thing i am grateful for during that day in the end of the year what i do i open everything and i see what happened during the year and i also help and encourage my clients to do the same you see how important for us to learn to take care of ourselves so it's easier to help our clients and therapy can be so important during this time. It's a pivotal work, especially when our clients are in the level of uh, that grief level or complex or complicated level. Yes, this is so important because we need to regulate our clients to make them to the yellow ball of the grief the ambiguous grief, right? And uh, it's so important therapy because it's going to help clients to change perceptions and perspectives to close life cycles. And it's interesting because that is a paradox because by the time the body is failing, the elderly make serious profound changes reconnecting with their origins, with their ancestors, with their loved ones on earth, forgiving, sublime feeling. And family members in general, they feel more connected, 
few lessons in isolation. It's a reflection, a time for reflection of life and relationships. And I don't see my clients when this is done properly, the grieving process done properly. I don't feel them to be regretful, but very grateful and peaceful. So those are recommended practice according to research. We should prepare patients and families for a likely death to avoid the red level of grief, the complex grief. We need to face difficult thoughts directly, including emotions. We need to discuss desires, rituals, spiritual practice, and funeral plans. We need to refer patients and family to resources in our area available, like telehealth, group support, family support, couples therapy, post death planning, and anything else that you may have, you may come up with to help them. We need also, this is for us therapists, we need to, uh, to do our self-care, our, to raise our self-awareness while facilitating others. And we need also, of course, to encourage our clients and families to do this. It needs just one person to change the system. It doesn't matter who your client is going to be. So for us therapists, we need to be more careful taking more breaks, distance ourselves from disasters or drama, to learn about local support, peer supervision, peer support, so important during this time. So in my clinical setting, I do my best to help my clients to find joy in the midst of pain. I teach them that we cannot control an external event. We, we have a false idea that we can control things, but we cannot. The only thing that we can control and master is ourselves, our feelings, our emotions, and our attitude. And this is what I help them, especially in the grieving process. So those are the techniques that more or less I use when I work with my clients. I do compassionate listening. I reflect and normalize emotions. I reframe experience. I psychoeducate. I do hypnotherapy and somatic hypnotherapy. I am resourceful to them whenever I can. And I also do rituals. I'm a very ritualistic person. I do rituals for it. And let's explore a little bit more these, um, these tools. So when I mean compassionate, compassionate listen, it's about creating and fostering a safe place for our clients to pay attention to, this, to their verbal and mainly non-verbal communication. No verbal communication is more than 70% of the total communication. Pay attention to their values, spiritual beliefs, because those values and spiritual beliefs is going to help us to reframe their experience. Pay attention to their own beliefs because it's going to help us when we work with hypnotherapy. Asking for clarification, we don't need to know about all religions, for example if a, a client is from a different background for you. But what you need to know is where, what they understand from their spiritual or religious beliefs. So you can help them to reframe their experience. Uh, sorry, Dr. Leiti. Sure. We are slightly over time at the moment. Is it possible to uh, maybe be able to wrap up? And maybe Absolutely. We can... Absolutely. Okay. Let's do something. I would do this. I will, I will. If you need more information about all these techniques, I will be very happy to to give more explanations because I will. I would give more explanations about the uh, techniques and cases and cases that I have. Alrighty. 
Thank you. So, that was helpful. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Anna, would you like to moderate the questions? Hello. Hi. All Hi. right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think um, um, I think one of the things uh, we, we had, there was some discussion as well in the chat box, and um, I think everyone agrees that the self compassion is something that is always overlooked. And I think that was really excellent point. Um, I think uh, I was actually looking forward to see because you were talk, going to talk about the ritual. Because as I think, yeah, that, can you maybe just comment on that? I know we didn't have time to to look at that, but the uh, ritual part of yeah, ritual because we are ritualistic individuals. Um, millions from millions and millions of times. For example, we have funerals are rituals, yeah. Um, yeah. birthdays, marriage. So when I do ritual, I I I give them ideas so he can they can close make a closure yes. or and make meaning from the experience with that. So I, I don't I make them to make meaningful to them from the, to make a ritual meaningful to them so many times for them to write a letter and use the elements of nature for example write a letter with the mm. intention and tell everything that they want to their father their loved one the elderly one and then burn this letter with the, the object uh, with the goal to release this energy, to close the cycle with the ashes, for example, to throw in the water, for example, to open a space for new cycles to, to happen. So things like this, it, it gives a sense of closure and meaning. Yeah, I think I think it's a wonderful point because I think to get that closure, and I think that's what um, everyone's grappling with now. Um, I I know there's a uh, there's a story I read in the Malaysian um, uh, newspaper, and they were talking about how this doctor uh, has to call up uh, this young lady to tell her that her father's not going to make it. You know, so um, the father's not going to make it, and she tells the doctor, "I just received a call five minutes ago from another hospital saying my mom's not going to make it." And I can't begin to imagine, you know, uh, it's in the same day people are losing yeah, so many. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So um, when you do these rituals, um, have you had experience doing it as a family? That means it could oh. be an individual or a family as well? Oh, yes. One of the cases that I would show you guys is that uh, I was working with a lady, a medical doctor. And by the time, uh, by the end, she invited me to do a ritual in her house with the family so everybody was able to talk and to set it and to throw their contribution this letter for example to in the fire they made a fire around us and we were able to do this and to then afterwards to, uh, to throw the ashes in the river near them it was beautiful that's a great book. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It, this is yeah. why I was meaning the sense in the beginning because they had to feel grateful and a sense of gratitude for this experience. It's so beautiful. We make, we need to make our clients to see the bright side of it because there is a bright side. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I think that this is uh, something new. I, I, I've also been wondering about this and, and I think this is very, very important. Thank you so much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Back to you, Tanisha. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lechi, for sharing with us thoughts on how we can deal with what we can run away from, life and death. My uh, pleasure. And I'm sorry for running. Uh, really are sorry also for having to cut you short because it was very helpful and informative to a lot of us but we are unfortunately adhering to a very strict absolutely and i'm sorry about that no, no worries at all and on another note we shall all continue to do our part as global citizens to flatten the curve in this pandemic as well